Well, hello, welcome back to day three of VBS. Veronica and I are having fun still at the water park with good old Fred here. He got a little dressed up. Yeah, he's kind of yeah. cute. All right, we are having fun taking the plunge and making a splash with Jesus. So if we can look back or think back on our other days, let's see, day one was plunge into obedience. Yay! And day two was plunge into worship. And then today's splash point is plunge into courage. And our life preserver, which is our Bible verse for the day, comes from Matthew 8, uh, verse 27. And it reads, and the man marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even winds and sea obey him? <clears throat> Pretty interesting. So we're going to plunge into courage. So what are some examples of uh, courage? What does courage mean? Well, what does courage mean? First, now yeah, let's take a look at that. Courage is the ability to move forward when what awaits us scares us. Ooh, have you guys ever been scared and needing courage? I have. I think Fred is a little bit. He's got all that noise back here with all those kids playing, yeah. so that's why he's hanging out with us. I need some courage. Yeah. So why do you think it's so important to have courage to our faith with God? Hmm. That's a good one. That is a good question. Yeah. So a, a life with Jesus will not always be easy. It certainly wasn't for Jesus or his disciples. But the reward for being courageous for Jesus is worth all the anxiety and fear. Ask Jesus to give you courage to plunge into him. A journey with God will be an adventure. That's for sure. Yes. And so today you're going to hear from Pastor Joe about how Jesus calms the storm, which is, I love that. I love that Bible good story. Or the Bible story. It's a mm -hmm. very good story. All right, and let's stand on up. We're going to have some fun singing some songs. All right, here we go.
Hey kids, welcome back to Bible Land Bay. I'm your lifeguard, Pastor Joe. Glad to be with you again. And Fred's here as well, ready to learn about God's Word. And so uh, let's get started today. I hope everyone's having a fun day so far. And let's just review some stuff. Uh, let's go through what we've talked about the last couple of days. First, the first day as we plunge into God's Word here at Bible Land Bay, uh, we had we plunged into obedience and we heard that story of that great catch of fish as Jesus calls his first disciples there on the on the lake. And then this next day we had a plunge into worship. We talked about worship as Jesus um, met with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter four. And we talked about worship yesterday. And now today, day three, as we plunge into God's word, uh, we're plunging into courage. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, courage, but today we're going to have a story. And I'll read that story here uh, in a moment. Uh, but let me first ask, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of things? Um, you don't have to you know, say them out loud, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this beach ball here, and every time I throw it up in the air, uh, you can either... Uh, shout out or say, speak the things that you're afraid of, or if you're, you know, too worried about what other people are going to hear, um, you can just think them inside, uh, think them in your head. But I want you to think about the things that you're afraid of, because maybe there are a lot of them. Maybe, maybe there's a couple of them. Maybe there's, um, you know, a few of them. Uh, but uh, maybe there's spiders. Maybe it's heights. Maybe it's uh, afraid of being alone or afraid of the dark, or maybe you're afraid of doing bad in school, or you're afraid of, I don't know, or you're afraid of different things that might happen in this world. I'd imagine that there's some fears that you have, and it's okay to have some fears. So every time I throw this ball up, I just want you to shout out or think in your head the things that you're afraid of. Ready? I'll do it uh, 10 times. Maybe that's enough for some of you, maybe it's too many for the rest of you, but um, I'll throw it up 10 times. Ready? One, two, Fred, you want to do this? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You shout them out. You remember the things that you're afraid of? Let's talk a little bit about you know, about that, about being afraid or having fear and having courage. You know, what might be, you know, the difference between fear and courage? Um, fear, fear might be, uh, fear might keep you from doing certain things. So let's say, you know, you're a young kid, and I know you probably don't want to admit this, but, you know, you're a young kid and you're afraid of the dark. Um, and so you, uh, don't like uh, going into your room alone at night. And so, you know, it keeps you from going into your room. So you run to your parents' room or whatever it might be. Um, so fear might keep you from doing something that's hard to do. Uh, courage, courage helps you face a scary situation. So courage doesn't mean that, um, that, that it's not something that you're afraid of or that you, or that it's easy. It just means that um, you can face it. You can go about it. You can, you can face it even though it's scary. And I wanna talk about a scary situation here in uh, the Bible. Uh, remember the last couple of days, we've been in the gospels and we talked about the gospels and the first day we we're in the gospel of Luke. And then yesterday we were in the gospel of John. And then today, we are in the Gospel of St. Matthew. That's the first of the four Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew. And we're in Matthew uh, chapter 8, and I'll start with verse uh, 23. And it says that when he got into the boat, that is Jesus, um, and his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with the waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became 
perfectly calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? So Jesus and the disciples, they're on a boat on the Sea of Galilee and they um, uh, are out there and Jesus is asleep in the boat. And there's this big storm. It's my understanding that storms whip up pretty quickly on the Sea of Galilee as it uh, is kind of a bowl uh, with, with uh, the hills on the sides. And so it kind of, so the, so the, uh, the wind swoops down and it becomes quite rough pretty easily. And, um, and, they're, and they're on the boat and this big storm comes and the waves are crashing in on them and they're afraid. They're scared for their lives because they're afraid they're going to die. They're afraid they're going to drown in, in, in this shipwreck because of this storm. And they can't do anything to stop it. Um, and, yeah, uh, and Jesus, what is Jesus doing? He's sleeping. He's sleeping. It's not bothering him at all. He's at peace. Um, and they go and they wake him up and they're like, Lord, save us. Wake up. Save us. We are perishing. In one of the other Gospels, it says, they say, don't you care that we are perishing? Let me ask you a question. Do you think Jesus cares about you? Do you think Jesus cares about you? Uh, if you don't think Jesus cares about you, let me tell you, he does. He cares about you so much uh, that he came to this earth. He cares about you so much uh, that he went to a cross to die for your sins. He cares about you so much that he rose again from the dead so that we can be with him Sorry. forever. Sorry. Um, so we can be with him forever. Uh, Jesus cares about us. So when the disciples are saying, we're perishing, don't you care? Um, Jesus is saying, don't you believe in me? Don't you trust in me? Don't you know who I am and what I've done for you? And Jesus wakes up and he says, uh, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And then he rebukes the winds and the waves. Can you imagine that? Rebuking the wind and the waves. I don't know how that, uh, we can't do that. You can't be on a boat in the middle of a storm and say, Stop, and it'll stop. But God, God can. I remember uh, uh, almost 18 years ago, um, I guess 17 years ago, my wife and I moved to Minnesota. You know, two California kids, and we moved to Minnesota beginning of June, which is also kind of the beginning of tornado season, right? Tornado season. And when there's a tornado sirens going off and the sky gets dark and the wind whips up and things are blowing and flying everywhere. Um, it gets, it could be a little interesting. And uh, there we were, you know, in our first apartment in Minnesota and um, sirens going up. What are, you know, what do these two California kids do? Well, we, we go out, we go outside. We want to see what this is like. We've never experienced that before. Probably not the best idea. You should probably take shelter. That tornado actually happened to touch down uh, not too far from us um, and uh, took out a high school football field in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Uh, but uh, here we were standing out there looking at it. When I was standing out there looking at it, I can't, I had no power, I'm powerless. I couldn't look at it and say, stop. No, I couldn't do that. Um, but who can do that? God can do that. Who can do stuff? God can do it. God can even tell the wind and the waves what to do. That's what Jesus does. He rebukes them and, and they stop. And so did you know, you know, we might be afraid in this life. We might, we might fear like the disciples did on that boat. Uh, like you might have fears in your life. Um, did you know that the Bible tells us over and over again, do not fear or have no fear. Do not be afraid. And I know that's a lot easier said than done, but the Bible tells us that over and over again. In fact, um, it's, some have said that it's 
in there 365 times, one for every day of the year. I'll be honest, I've never done that count or looked into that, so I don't know, you know, how accurate that is. Uh, though, um, you know, there's it's in there a lot. In fact, this past Sunday, in our gospel reading from Matthew 10, we heard it three times: "Have no fear, do not be afraid," and so on. Uh, so the Bible tells us over and over again: "Do not be afraid." Why? Why should we not be afraid? Well, because just like those disciples in the boat, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. He never leaves you. Uh, it doesn't mean that there aren't scary things in this life. It doesn't mean that we're not going to worry in this life. It doesn't mean that everything's going to go our way in this life. Of course not. Um, there's going to be difficult times, just like the disciples had lots of difficult times. But let me tell you this. You have a God who loves you, a God who came to earth for you, a God who died for you, a God who rose again for you, and a God who promises you that he is always with you. Jesus says to his disciples at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, he says, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And that's Jesus' promise to you too. He is with you always. He is in control. He loves you. He is with you. Um, and, um, and he will not leave you. And so we're going to be afraid in this life of various things. Uh, some of those might be silly and, and irrational and you, you know, probably don't need to be afraid of them. Others are pretty serious things. But even when we're afraid, we should hear these words of Jesus. Do not fear. Do not worry. Take courage. Why? Because Jesus is with you. He is your God. He loves you. And he will never leave you. He is helping you. He is your, uh, your rock, your fortress, your, your refuge. He, is, he holds you in his arms even as we are tired and, um, and weak. Uh, he is strong and he watches over us and he never leaves us. So plunge into courage. Not courage that comes from how strong you are. But courage that comes from how strong your God is. Courage that comes from Jesus. So plunge in to courage. Remember that this week. And um, our Bible verse for today, those words we heard in Matthew 8, verse 27. It says that the, the disciples, the men marveled. Think about that word for a minute, marveled. Have you ever marveled at anything or been in awe or astonished or gone, wow, what is going on? Being amazed at something. Uh, maybe even a little bit um, scared, but they marveled and said, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? What kind of man is it? A man who is God himself. That's who. And that's why we need not fear, for he's with us, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for always being with us that even though we are afraid of things in this life, we know that we have a God who is our strength, who is our help, who never leaves us um, and, and always watches over us. So help us to have courage as we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, well, we'll see you tomorrow for day four here at Bible Land Bay. Have fun with the rest of your Vacation Bible School stuff today, and we'll see you soon. Later.
hey, there's my dad. I guess it's time to go. Yeah. Hopefully we get more time to play tomorrow. Yeah. Used to hang it up later. Um, later. Probably one of the skinny pieces. But that looks okay. Some more. Okay. They're not terribly long, actually. But that's okay. So, so I say one for hanging it up later. That's, that's yeah. fine. Oh, that's okay, and then awesome. the rest of them you can just take on the bottom. However you like. Just tape it down. Ah. You lost it. I, I got it. <laughs> I've done this kind of thing before, it's fine. Some of the ribbon is kind of curly. If you don't like it to be so curly, you can try bending it backwards. Then it won't be as curly, but it's kind of fun to be curly too, so however you like. There we go. Alright. So now you, now, now you can take it and Put it together and a steeper would be very good too. Steeper would probably be better. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put, put it upside down here, the tape. Oh, I don't know, the right side. Yeah, that's right. That way. We're going to put that one on that side. There we go. And then we're going to put it like this. Yeah. Match it up. Hopefully. And put another, another big piece of tape there. I think I'm going to add one more piece of tape on the top for good measure. Just in case, yeah. 
and, and also fold it down. That usually helps. Uh, another one on the bottom. There. Can you move all the... You got a really curly guy. <laughs> These are unfortunately not hole punched, so you're going to have to tape this down for the top. Or if you, if you have a stapler, a stapler would be candy too. Some people don't have staplers too candy. But if you have one, go ahead and get a stapler. Don't drop it. <laughs> That's the wind stroke. <laughs> <laughs> your, um, your ribbon has a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to closing of VBS Day 3. So we learned today about how Jesus calms the storm. So very easily, all he did was just calm them. Very simple, with a few words. So do you think if God can calm the storms of the sea, do you think he can calm the storms in your life? Calm whatever is troubling you? I think I, he can. I think he can. Yeah. What do you think, Fred? You think he can calm the storms in your life? I mean, I know it's hard up over there yeah. with all those other flamingos. Yes, it's, it's very hard. All right, so we're just going to end the day with a few more songs. So stand on up and let's sing some songs.
right, so we're going to end this evening with a prayer. So let's all close our eyes, fold our hands, and bow our heads in prayer. O oh, gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.